War is terrible, for all parties involved. But it has often played a pivotal role in advancing technology. And Russia's invasion of Ukraine is shaping up to be a key proving ground for artificial intelligence. For Iland, perhaps in a few instances, for good, too. Civil society groups and AI researchers have been increasingly alarmed in recent years about the advent of lethal autonomous weapons systems, and AI-enabled weapons with the ability to select targets and kill people without human oversight. This has led to a concerted effort at the United Nations to try to ban or at least restrict the use of such systems. But those talks have so far not resulted in much progress. Meanwhile, the development of autonomous weapons has continued at a quickening pace. Right now, those weapons are still in their infancy. We won't see humanitarian groups' worst nightmares about swarms of slaughterbot drones realized in the Ukraine conflict. But weapons with some degree of autonomy are likely to be deployed by both sides. Already, Ukraine has been using the Turkish-made TB2 drone, which can take off, land, and cruise autonomously, although it still relies on a human operator to decide when to drop the laser-guided bombs it carries. The drone can also use lasers to guide artillery strikes. Russia meanwhile has a kamikaze drone with some autonomous capabilities called the Lancet, which it reportedly used in Syria and could use in Ukraine. The Lancet is technically a loitering munition designed to attack tanks, vehicle columns, or troop concentrations. Once launched, it circles a pre-designated geographic area until detecting a pre-selected target type. It then crashes itself into the target, detonating the warhead it carries. Russia has made AI a strategic priority. Vladimir Putin, the country's president, said in 2017 that whoever becomes the leader in AI will become the ruler of the world. But at least one recent assessment, from researchers at the US government-funded Center for Naval Analysis, says Russia lags the US and China in developing AI defense capabilities. In an interview last week with Politico, one of the study's authors, Samuel Bendet, told the publication that Russia would definitely use AI in Ukraine to help analyze battlefield data, including surveillance footage from drones. He also said that it was possible that China would provide Russia with more advanced AI-enabled weapons to use in Ukraine, in exchange for gaining insights into how Russia effectively integrates drones into combat operations, an area in which Russia has battle-tested expertise from Syria that China lacks. AI might also play a vital role in the information war. Many fear that AI techniques such as deepfakes, highly realistic video fakes created using an AI technique, will supercharge Russian disinformation campaigns, although so far there is no evidence of deepfakes being used. Machine learning can also be used to help detect disinformation. The large social media platforms already deploy these systems, although their track record in accurately identifying and removing disinformation is spotty at best. Some people have also suggested AI can help analyze the vast amount of open source intelligence coming out of Ukraine, everything from TikTok videos and Telegram posts, of troop formations and attacks uploaded by average Ukrainians to publicly available satellite imagery. This could allow civil society groups to fact check the claims made by both sides in the conflict, as well as to document potential atrocities and human rights violations. That could be vital for future war crimes prosecutions. Finally, the war has deeply affected world's AI researchers, as it has everyone else. Many prominent researchers have engaged in discussion over Twitter about how best the profession should respond to the conflict, and how the technology it works on could help end the current conflict and alleviate human suffering, or at least prevent future wars. The tech publication protocol has an overview of the discussion, much of which, to my ears at least, seemed odd and disconnected from the realities of international politics and war and peace. This disconnect may seem unimportant, perhaps even comical, but I think it is deeply concerning. When those developing technology can't grasp the implications of what they are building and how it might be used, we are all in danger. The physicists working on nuclear power understood immediately the implications of what they were creating, and were at the forefront of efforts to govern atomic weapons, even if they were overly sanguine about the prospects for international control. Too many of today's computer scientists seem willfully blind to the political and military dimensions of their work, and too willing to leave the hard task of figuring out how to govern AI to others. Perhaps this war will be a wake-up call for them, too. Through information captured by commercial companies and individuals, the realities of Russia's military posturing are accessible to anyone via internet search or news feed. 
Commercial imaging companies are posting up to the minute, geographically precise images of Russia's military forces. Several news agencies are regularly monitoring and reporting on the situation. TikTok users are posting video of Russian military equipment on rail cars allegedly on their way to augment forces already in position around Ukraine. And internet sleuths are tracking this flow of information. This democratization of intelligence collection in most cases is a boon for intelligence professionals. Government analysts are filling the need for intelligence assessments using information sourced from across the internet, instead of primarily relying on classified systems or expensive sensors high in the sky or arrayed on the planet. However, sifting through terabytes of publicly available data for relevant information is difficult. Knowing that much of the data could be intentionally manipulated to deceive complicates the task. Enter the practice of open source intelligence. The U.S. Director of National Intelligence defines open source intelligence, or OSINT, as the collection, evaluation and analysis of publicly available information. The information sources include news reports, social media posts, YouTube videos and satellite imagery from commercial satellite operators. OSINT communities and government agencies have developed best practices for OSINT, and there are numerous free tools. Analysts can use the tools to develop network charts of, for example, criminal organizations by scouring publicly available financial records for criminal activity. Private investigators are using OSINT methods to support law enforcement, corporate and government needs. Armchair sleuths have used OSINT to expose corruption and criminal activity to authorities. In short, the majority of intelligence needs can be met through OSINT. Even with OSINT best practices and tools, OSINT contributes to the information overload intelligence analysts have to contend with. The intelligence analyst is typically in a reactive mode, trying to make sense of a constant stream of ambiguous raw data and information. Machine learning, a set of techniques that allows computers to identify patterns in large amounts of data, is proving invaluable for processing OSINT information, particularly photos and videos. Computers are much faster at sifting through large datasets, so adopting machine learning tools, and techniques to optimize the OSINT process is a necessity. Identifying patterns makes it possible for computers to evaluate information for deception and credibility and predict future trends. For example, machine learning can be used to help determine whether information was produced by a human, or by a bot or other computer program and whether a piece of data is authentic or fraudulent. And while machine learning is by no means a crystal ball, it can be used, if it's trained with the right data and has enough current information, to assess the probabilities of certain outcomes. No one is going to be able to use the combination of OSINT and machine learning to read Russian President Vladimir Putin's mind, but the tools could help analysts assess how, for example, a Russian invasion of Ukraine might play out.